Morning all. And it's post bag time again. So what's in the box? Well it says LED module. Let's have a look. Aha! Interesting. So this is a component tester. Now these things have been kicking around in various... Oh! Knife got a bit close to the uh, battery cable there. Uh, in various guises for a while now, but um, I finally thought I'd take the plunge because this one looks sophisticated enough to uh, actually be quite useful. So I've put a 9 volt battery on, let's uh, press test, and it says transistor tester, battery voltage, and no component in there. So I'm going to put this uh, MOSFET in there now, and I think you have to put it in positions one, two, and three. Let's try that. So that's telling me it's an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Pins one, two, and three are gate drain source. The uh, gate capacitance is 5.67 nanofarads. Now I assume that's the threshold voltage, 3.4 volts, so at that voltage it starts to conduct. Um, although of course that won't be when it's fully conducting. And then it gives you a nice symbol of an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Excellent! Now I seem to remember that you can do potentiometers in here, so let's put this in there. So that's 200k. Let's test it. 9.1 volts. And that's saying that it's two resistors joined on pin 2 with 108k and 100. 12k. That adds up to 200, doesn't it? Or does it? 108 and 112. A bit more than 200k. Now let's see what happens if I adjust that pot. So it doesn't appear to give you a live indication of uh, resistance, but of course if I change it to a different value and retest it, 8.7 volts on the battery now, then we get different numbers, 35k and 190k. Good. So how about a BC109 in a good old-fashioned metal can? So yep, it's a transistor, BJT, NPN type, 123 is collector base emitter, the HFE is 553, and forward voltage, 652 millivolts, so 0.6 volts basically. And a lovely circuit diagram. Right, I think I've fooled it because this is a VN10KM, and uh, it says it's a BJT, whereas it's not, it's a FET. But if I flip it round, then it does get it as a MOSFET, uh, N-channel enhancement mode, drain gate source, uh, 92 picofarads gate capacitance. So uh, that caught it out a little bit. And finally, can it do a blue LED? Yeah, well it's got it as a diode, um, and it's got the forward voltage as 2.76 volts. So that looks good. I like that. So the component tester is this one on eBay. Um, it was 28, uh, sorry, $21.58, which is £12.62, and I got it from Monks. Okay, what's this one? It's a dinky. What's a dinky? Yes, this is a charger doctor, USB. Let's plug it into uh, the power bank. Well now, this is interesting. I've got the Nexus 4 phone, which I'm actually recording on, uh, drawing current through this thing. It's saying 4.9 volts. It's volts on the left, current on the right, so it's naught point, well, there's a segment missing. In fact, it's so dim, I've got a job to see it, but I um, don't know whether you can see it there. The bottom segment of the last digit is missing, and it was flickering on and off just now. So I've ripped the top off this thing, and I mean, it's probably just bad soldering on there. I might be able to get that out and just go over the joints on it, but um, that's not very good, is it, really? Also, I've noticed that although those digits are reasonably bright, 
when you put the display cover on, it completely, almost completely masks them out. This is a bit rubbish, isn't it, really? So here's the thing out of its little box. There's a wiring bodge mod there near that potentiometer. Uh, the current sense resistor is that loop of wire wrapped right around the displays. Now the soldering on the bottom doesn't look so bad that it would cause a digit to fail. So it's possible that the uh, LED block itself is faulty. But I will just touch all those joints with an iron to see if I can restore this thing, but I'm not very uh, pleased with how dim these segments are, particularly when the cover's on. I just thought it would be good to have uh, one of these things where it displays volts and amps at the same time, but quite frankly this is no match for the rather excellent uh, OLED charger doctor which shows you four things all at once. And look at that, it's in bright sunlight. But it does come in a very nice case. That fits in there and then it's got this little, oh, well, perhaps it doesn't, little magnetic latch there. Nice. So the rather disappointing charger doctor that shows volts and amps at the same time was $8.29, rather expensive, £4.85, and came from single 2000. Right, what's this one? It is stuck together with sellotape. Ah, hold on. So this is a uh, three to six volts mini submersible pump. So let's just see if it turns. This is a 3.7 volt lithium. Yep. And now let's try it in a cutaway milk carton. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's getting very messy. Good, well that works. That's gonna become a water feature. So the plan is to uh, take the solar panel out of this power bank, which I've no intention of keeping as a power bank, wiring it directly to this uh, three volt pump and making a little water feature for the garden. Nice, and it works. So I did finally cannibalize the uh, solar power bank and here's my water feature. Well now that's really pretty, isn't it? So the three volt mini submersible pump, uh, what's that, 120 liters per hour with a 1.1 meter head. Yes, I believe that when I see it. Um, but it was only $2.84, £1.66, and came from Say M Love. And the final one for today is this. Now this is from UXL again, and it's two ferrite rings. And they're quite big. Now these are for my MPPT solar charge controller. And you can see if I put the big ferrite next to the one I'm currently using, there is a very large difference in size. So that's going to give me a lot more inductance and the ability to wind it with some very thick wire. So it'll have a much lower resistance. I bought two so that I can uh, experiment with different thicknesses of wire. But that should make a big difference, I think to uh, to this project. So uh, they can go in my inductors component drawer and you can see uh, they're substantially bigger than the other ones. I think um, the one in the rig at the moment is something like that. But these ones are all much the same size so it'll be interesting to experiment with these much bigger ones. Now these uh, ferrite rings were £1.98 each. I uh, bought two of them. And these came from Seller Bible, um, and again, they were shipped to me from the UK, so they turned up quite quickly. But I think for the project, for the MPPT solar charge controller project, uh, that big ferrite ring at £2, that's pretty reasonable. And that is today's post bag. <laughs>